Hello and welcome to the worship services of Startful First United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you have joined us today in this season of Lent, a time of reflection, a time of introspection, a time of laying down the things that are hindering our relationship with God and with others. So thank you for joining us. We pray that you will experience God's presence as we worship Him together. Good evening. It is so good to see each of you this beautiful evening. Hope that you have enjoyed the day, enjoyed the sunshine and the pleasant temperatures, and it is good to be in the house of the Lord together. Just a few announcements this evening. Um, please remember our Lenten luncheons that uh, are on Wednesday at noon, uh, from noon to 1245. We'll have a different pastor from churches throughout the Startful area uh, preaching throughout the season of Lent. Hope that you can join us for that. Also remember that next Saturday um, that Troop 45 is selling uh, tickets for the Troop 45 famous chicken dinner and hope that if you don't have your tickets already you will get tickets for that. This coming Friday we will have a parents night out from 6 to 9.30. And also, please remember the prayer quilts for Rosalind Foyle and Mary Stennis and the chapel. Go down and uh, say a prayer and, and tie a knot for them. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this day that you have made. God, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to once again come together and worship you. God, to be drawn closer to you and closer to one another, to hear your word so that we might be prepared to go out, to be lights in a dark world, to be your witnesses wherever we go. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us in spite of us. In your name we pray, amen. About three months ago, the most marvelous thing happened on Sunday night in the evening worship service. Do you remember what it was? Who said yes? What was it, Kitty? You moved to the front. Yes, it was the most marvelous. It took my breath away. In fact, my heart almost stopped beating. I couldn't believe that I moved y'all from way in the back to the front. Uh, if you did that tonight, it would be the most good. Thank you, Prentice. Oh, thank y'all. You are wonderful. Isn't that glorious? Thank you so much. The hymns are going to sound better, and Greg will do a much better job. Thank you so much. Did you hear my heart stop? This wonderful. Thank you so much for doing that. 
thank you again. I appreciate it. And tonight I'm going to let you, I'm not going to let, I, I need to correct that. We are going to choose your favorite, four of your favorite hymns or gospel songs. And Jeremy always refers to this night as Stump the Organist Night because some that he doesn't recognize and he has to sight read. So, um, but most of the night, most of the, the times are we are very familiar hymns or gospel songs. So I need your number and the first four that I hear are the ones we're going to do. 702. 593. 73, okay, and 474. 474, great, great. All right, our first one is 702. Let's look at that. Did you get your Lord of the Dancing? Okay, we'll have to probably work that in. 702. <laughs> Sing with all the saints in glory. Is that the one that you wanted? Wonderful, wonderful number. Would you stand and let's sing the first, the second, the third, and the fourth stanzas. Jeremy? to start off with. 593. 593, which is, here am I, Lord, Lord, a wonderful, wonderful number. Let's sing the first and the third stanza. 593.
number 73, another great hymn, O Worship the King. Let us sing the first, the third, and the fifth stanza. The first, the third, and the fifth, and that's page 73, please. And if you will turn to 474, a wonderful spiritual, precious Lord, take my hand. And let's sing together the first and the third stanzas, numbered 474. <clears throat> and we're going to do this for Greg. This is one of his favorite, uh, it's a gospel song, really, and it's Lord of the Dance. It's 261. How many of you remember at Christmas time at the Festival of Lights, we did a big arrangement of this called the Lord of the Dance? Remember it? Yes, sure you do. Sure you do. We're going to do just the first verse tonight, Greg, but let's do it. Jeremy?
Thank you for that, Ted, Jeremy. Our scripture tonight is going to come to us from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Again, that's Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. I was joking with Dr. Gordon before church tonight, and I said, you know, I think that there were less severe penalties in the Old Testament for much worse crimes. Having to listen to me twice in a day, that's a terrible thing to have to do. Amen. <clears throat> Thanks, Cecil. <laughs> Mark 4, 35 through 41. God's word says to us, On that day when evening had come, he said to him, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving behind the crowd, they took with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with them. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat against the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. They woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Won't you pray with me and for me? Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather again tonight. Lord, we pray that you open our hearts and we pray that you open our minds. Lord, I pray that you bless my thoughts and words, and I pray that you bless the meditations of your people's heart, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. An interesting bit of trivia for you. Did you know that the bathtub was actually invented in 1850? The bathtub was invented in 1850, and the telephone was invented in 1875. So a famous author actually quoted, do you know what that means? That means that you could take a bath in peace for 25 years without the telephone ringing. <laughs> it seems to never fail, does it? Just when you think you have some peace and quiet, the telephone rings, the children begin to get upset, the grandchildren cry, a water pipe breaks, or there's a knock at the door. Peace is a precious commodity, and it is so, so elusive for us in this day and time. Peace is a beautiful word. Yet it's a word that is a stranger to many people today, many of us today. The fast-paced lifestyle that we have. We have an unprecedented amount of material possessions that we want. But for some reason, we still can't gain that peace that we all seek. Stress is our constant companion. Anxiety haunts our dreams. What if we should be downsized out of a job? What if we should be ill for a prolonged period of time? What if our next project is a failure? You see, it seems as though in our scripture tonight, the disciples are not the only ones searching for peace in a raging storm. But it begs the question for us tonight, where do we find peace? That is the longing of every heart, is it not? The experience of the disciples and his experience that we will all have eventually, maybe figuratively and not literally, but out in a boat, in a terrible storm, and no peace in sight. Most of you remember the scene well as it's recounted for us in our scripture. Jesus and his disciples decided to cross the Sea of Galilee by boat, and all of a sudden a terrible storm came up. The winds howled. The waves beat against their boat to the point that it began to fill with water. The disciples, they began to panic. Now it's interesting that Jesus was at the stern of the boat and he wasn't just sitting there, he was actually asleep. So that means one of two things. Jesus was either a very sound sleeper or more likely he was at peace with all of the world. I wonder how many people, how many of us toss and turn in our beds at night, not because of the storm outside, but because of the storm that rages inside. The disciples woke Jesus, and in their disturbed state of mind, they asked him, Do you not care if we perish? And Mark tells us simply that Jesus rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, 
be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then Jesus said to them, why are you afraid? Still have you no faith? Mark tells us that the disciples were filled with awe and said to one another, Who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? The scripture teaches us many things. But one thing that we are all familiar with is that storms are a day in, day out part of life. Some days are pleasant and non-challenging, but as we noted, weather can change rapidly. Soon thunder is crashing all around us and our tiny craft is tossed on the waves of life. Of course, storm is a relative term. Each of us has to give our own definition to the nature of a storm, whether it is an illness, whether it is a family matter, whether it is anxiety, whether it is a concern, whether it's a spiritual matter. Each of us has to define what that storm is. But each of us will have storms in our lives. Now, when we hear about the storm and we think about the disciples and, and what was going on, well, we think, well, of course, if something like this was happening and we were in a boat, we would panic too. But we have to remember that these were not inexperienced sailors. After all, what did they do for a living? They were fishermen. They had fished these waters many times and experienced many storms, but for some reason this storm was different and they were afraid. I don't think there's anybody in this room that has never been afraid for one reason or the other. Fear is a part of life and fear comes mostly when we face the storms of life. The artist Rembrandt once painted a canvas titled The Storm on the Sea of Galilee. And if you examine the painting carefully, you will note that there are 14 men in the boat. There are 12 disciples plus Jesus. That makes 13. Who was the 14th passenger? It's Rembrandt himself. It's Rembrandt himself. He placed himself in the picture to present to us that each and every one of us will face a magnitude of different storms in our life and we have to have faith because we were sitting there as the disciples were. Maybe we all know what it means to be on the verge of panic. Maybe all of us know what it's like to have fears build up so much that they overwhelm us. Each of us has to face our own storm. Often the greatest adversity we face is our own fear. Jesus rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he asked his disciples, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? That's the question that many of, ourselves, many of us might ask ourselves from time to time when the winds are howling and the waves are beating against the boat of life. Why am I afraid? Where's my faith? We have sung many songs with that same message. And sometimes it's hard to hold on to when the whole world is shaking and things are falling apart around us. Still, this is a message that we all need to hear. The message that there is one who quiets the winds and stills the waves. There is one who speaks to our hearts and if we listen, will calm our fearful spirits as well. Author Linda Sledge recalls a day from her childhood that she will never forget. She was playing, playing on a beach outside of her parents' condominium. She was playing with her little plastic red pail and shovel, and she wandered off too deep into the sea. The waves began to crash around her, and she lost her footing. As soon as she would gain it again, it seems as though the waves would continually sweep her up, and she was knocked down, not knowing what was going to happen to her. Then all of a sudden, she saw two arms reaching out for her. It was her father who pulled her up and said, I was watching you the entire time. So many of us 
can relate to that story or should relate to that story. Because waves beat down on us in life and we wonder which way is up, what's going to happen, if anybody cares, if anybody is watching. But then God, through his love, through his forgiveness, reaches out and says, I've been here with you the entire time. So tonight, those are Christ's words to us. That he is not sleeping, that he is watching over us, that he is with us even through the storms of life. But the question for us tonight is, why are we afraid? Have we still no faith? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This evening we open up the altar for prayer time. Come as you're led, and do as you will. Our closing hymn tonight is an old familiar gospel song, I Surrender All. We're going to sing the first and the fifth stanzas, and I'm going to ask that on the last stanza, on the refrain, I'm going to ask Jeremy not to play, and we're going to sing it a cappella. And if you sing a part, would you sing that part, please? Uh, would you stand and let's sing the first and the fifth stanzas, number 354. Let's stand together.
now receive the benediction. Go in peace and serve the Lord and have faith because God is with us even through life's storms. Amen. Thank you.